Excel was released in 1985, and VLOOKUP was included in the original release. 34 years later, Excel released XLOOKUP to address some of the shortcomings of VLOOKUP. So today we're gonna compare XLOOKUP and VLOOKUP step by step and finish up with a list of things that only XLOOKUP can do. And let's get started right now. Both formulas start with a lookup value. And this is the value we're going to look up to return more information about. In this example, we're looking up this item ID for our coffee business. For VLOOKUP type equal sign VLOOKUP and select the cell containing the lookup value. And for XLOOKUP, we'll do the same. Equal sign XLOOKUP and select C5 with the lookup value. The next step is where VLOOKUP and XLOOKUP diverge. VLOOKUP requires a lookup array. And this is the range of cells where VLOOKUP will search for the lookup value. So I'm gonna highlight this range of cells over here. And then VLOOKUP requires a column index number, which is used to return the corresponding column in the lookup array. And in this instance, we want the customer, so we will use three. XLOOKUP splits these steps up differently. It first requires the lookup array, which is the range of cells that hold the lookup value. In this case, column G. Then in the next argument, XLOOKUP requires the return array, which is the range of cells containing the return value. And since we want the customer, I'm gonna highlight the data in column I. Lastly, VLOOKUP has the true and false range lookup options. True gives you an exact match, and false gives you an approximate match. And if you don't specify the match type, VLOOKUP defaults to true, approximate match. So since I want an exact match, I'm gonna enter false, close parentheses, and press enter. XLOOKUP both simplifies and expands on VLOOKUP's match types. And we're gonna go into that in more depth soon. But now I'm just gonna leave this blank because XLOOKUP defaults to an exact match when you don't specify the match mode. So I'm gonna close parentheses and press enter. And you can see both these formulas return the same result. And if you're enjoying this video, please make sure to click the like button. Thank you so much. VLOOKUP searches the leftmost column of the table array for the lookup value and moves right the number of columns specified by the column index number and returns the value. XLOOKUP searches for the lookup value in the lookup array and returns the corresponding value in the return array. Now let's talk about all the things that only XLOOKUP can do. VLOOKUP can only return values to the right of the lookup value and arranged vertically. XLOOKUP can work up, down, left, right, and pretty much any way you can imagine. Here we have a table with quarterly revenue for two years. XLOOKUP can return the revenue for Q2 2022. We'll start by typing equal sign XLOOKUP. We'll select cell C5 as the lookup value, highlight the quarters as the lookup array, and we'll highlight the revenue as the return array. Close parentheses and press enter, and you can see XLOOKUP works with data arranged horizontally. Similarly, XLOOKUP can return values to the left of the lookup array. Start by typing equal sign XLOOKUP, select the lookup value here. The lookup array is again our list of quarters, and the return array is profit, which is to the left of the lookup array. And when I close parentheses and press enter, XLOOKUP delivers the result where VLOOKUP would be unable to. XLOOKUP can return an array with multiple items, whereas VLOOKUP can only return one. Here I've selected this item ID as the lookup value, and this column is the lookup array. And I need to select a return array. I can select a return array that includes customer and customer ID. And when I close parentheses and press enter, XLOOKUP returns both the customer and the customer ID for the lookup value. Common VLOOKUP configuration was to wrap it in an if error statement to hide unsightly errors like pound NA. But XLOOKUP has an optional input called if not found. In this example, I'm looking up eBay in this customer list, and you can see that it's not there. But I can include a string that XLOOKUP will return when a value is missing. I want XLOOKUP to return missing customer if the value isn't found. 
And when I close parentheses and press enter, XLOOKUP returns missing customer as expected. VLOOKUP could only return exact or approximate matches. XLOOKUP takes these to the next level with the match mode input. Match mode can return an exact match, an approximate match, where it returns the next smallest item, an approximate match where it returns the next largest item, and a wildcard match. Here we're looking up the margin percentage of some coffee beans to determine what margin category they're in. And if I use match mode negative one, XLOOKUP returns the next smallest item. In this case, the medium margin category for having a 70% margin. And if I use a match mode of one, XLOOKUP returns the next largest item. In this case, high and jumping up to the 80% margin category. When VLOOKUP finds the first instance of the lookup value, it stops searching and returns that value. XLOOKUP has more options with which to return values with the search mode input. For example, here I'm gonna use search mode negative one. And when I press enter, the XLOOKUP returns Kroger, which is the last instance of this item ID, rather than Walmart, which is the first instance of this item ID. And when I switch this back to one of search mode, the formula returns Walmart, which is the first instance of the lookup value. Other search mode options include two and negative two, which relate to binary search. And I'm not gonna cover those in this Excel video, but I do give an overview in the Excel workbook that I link to in the description of this video. The workbook is totally free and it's based on the web, which means you can easily save a copy for yourself. It's a great resource if you're learning XLOOKUP, so make sure you go check it out. The best way you can help me out is to leave a comment and let me know what other topics would you like me to cover. And I will see you next time. If you're still around, let's wrap up this video with a spicy nested XLOOKUP. We're looking for the Q4 2021 revenue for the Indonesian coffee skew. So let's start with equal sign XLOOKUP and the lookup value is the year and the quarter and the lookup array is the list of quarters. And instead of completing this XLOOKUP, we're gonna start a new XLOOKUP. The lookup value is going to be the coffee skew, and the lookup array is gonna be this list of coffee. And the return array is all of the revenue information in the table. And we'll leave all the other optional inputs as blank, close parentheses, and press enter. The formula returns the Q4 2021 revenue for the Indonesia coffee skew. Thank you again and goodbye for real.